Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the Vivaldi browser. Now, I've been using Vivaldi now off and on for uh, two or three weeks. And I have some thoughts. And most of them are confused thoughts. And some of them are coherent thoughts. And some of them are other kind of thoughts. I, <laughs> I, I'm very interested in this browser for a number of reasons. Uh, I'm also... At the beginning, at least, I was very interested in switching to the browser because of those reasons. So I just thought I'd make a video and talk about it because I have a very interesting history with Firefox. For the longest time, I've loved Firefox and disagreed with all their politics stuff. And now even the browser has kind of gone to shit. And it's just... It's not as good as it used to be. And there's some changes that they've made recently that have made it, made it harder to use. They've made some changes that have made it harder to theme, which is disappointing, at least to me. And, you know, so I've been looking actively for months now to try to find a browser that I could switch to. Now, I've tried Cute Browser. I've tried LibreWolf. I've tried Brave. I made a video about Brave. I've tried Microsoft Edge, which was... I, I don't understand why that exists at all, uh, in the, unless you're a Microsoft user. Uh, so... I've tried, like, all the browsers, sometimes all at once. So it, it's been a long journey, and Vivaldi was kind of my last stop. And the reason why it was my last stop is because it's not open source. So I was trying to desperately to find a browser that is completely open source that I could support, like Firefox. And that's the reason why I put Vivaldi off until last, because it's not, like I said, it's not open source. It's based on open source technologies, but the wrapper that it's in is proprietary. And like I talked in the po about in the podcast, Tyler and I talked about in the podcast, I don't think necessarily t proprietary software is bad, and I, I use tons of proprietary software every day. Uh, it's just in this case, in terms of the browser, I really wanted it to be FOSS. And... I think that I can say that my number one problem with Vivaldi, and I'm going to talk about a few of the other problems that I encountered, but or my number one problem with Vivaldi is that it's not open source. If, if it was completely open source, I could probably overlook the other problems that I had, uh, but because it's not, I'm having a harder time. So let's go ahead and just jump into what I think uh, past that. Okay, so this is what my Vivaldi browser looks like. And one of the reasons why I really wanted to try it was because out of all the browsers that are out there, Vivaldi seems to be the only browser manufacturer, I guess, whatever, browser developer, that is willing to play around with the user interface. Now, Firefox will go through and they'll make, you know changes to the user interface all the time, but those aren't user controllable. Like they made that huge mega bar or whatever a few a couple years ago, and everybody hates it, almost universally hates the mega bar, URL, URL bar or whatever. Uh, but they didn't listen, and it's still there, and it still sucks. So they make changes to the, to the interface all the time, but the, like I said, they're not user controllable. And Chrome has looked the same forever, Brave just looks like Chrome. Microsoft Edge just looks like Chrome with a few tweaks. I guess they have vertical tabs now, but you can do that in Chrome. So I was really looking forward to Vivaldi because they seem to be at least a little okay with giving users a lot of options to control how the browser looks. And I'm very much a person who likes to tweak how my browser looks. I mean, this, this right here is what my Firefox looks like. I have the one line thing and I've done the whole user Chrome thing. And, you know, I like being able to tweak my browser. And that's why I was looking forward to Vivaldi so much because I was able to officially, right in the the settings, change how this looks. So I can actually sh like show you. I can just go to settings here and uh, tabs. And it just gives you places where you can put the tabs. It can same thing with the address bar you can put it at the bottom and stuff it's that's not something that any other browser does out of the box now you can do it with firefox obviously but you have to use css in order to do it that's really cool now i wish it take it a little bit farther like i would like to be able to get rid of this title bar completely 
that's just a like a, a nitpicky thing. I I mean, I just want to get rid of it. I don't. I use a window manager, so I don't need the 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 buttons up here, and I don't need a title bar. I just want that all to go away. Supposedly, there's a way to do it. I haven't been able to get to work, but whatever. It doesn't matter. So I was really excited. Like I said, I was really excited because it gives you that kind of control, and it's really not something that you see anywhere else. But once I started using the browser, I started noticing some things. First of all, Vivaldi claims that it's faster than Chrome and it's faster than Firefox. I have not noticed this. Now, Firefox is not the most speediest of browsers. Uh, I, I would go so far as to say Firefox is actually fairly slow when compared to Chrome. Uh, but I, use, I put up with it because of me not liking Chrome and also Firefox being better than Chrome in other ways. For Vivaldi, I've not, like I said, I've not noticed any speed you know, benefits. And in fact, in some cases, specifically with like Google products like YouTube and Google Docs and stuff, it's actually slower than Firefox is, which is, you know, kind of saying something. So the one thing you want out of a browser is to be able to use the things you need to use uh, efficiently, uh, or at least at the same level as the other browsers that it's competing with. And Vivaldi doesn't offer that for me, at least. Uh, at least in my experience, a lot of the things that it, it, you have to use, like especially Google products, like I said, seem to be slower here than they are in Firefox and even way slower than they are in Chrome. Now, obviously, Chrome does its own thing because Chrome and Google, you know, Google owns Chrome so that they can go through and optimize their products to you know, suit that browser the best. And that's the reason why the other browsers that aren't based on uh, Chrome or aren't Chrome itself, you know, tend to be slower. But like I said, it's way slower in Vivaldi. The other thing I noticed that I didn't care for is the syncing. Now, Firefox has gone through and completely ruined their syncing in terms of like tab syncing. They moved their uh, sync tabs functionality from the library section to uh, like a sub menu of a sub menu. It's ridiculous and completely annoying. I sync tabs between my phone and my computer all the time. It's something I do all the time. Now I've, I've had to move to something like Pocket in order to actually do this because Firefox has gone through and buried the functionality. Now, Vivaldi does it a little bit better in terms of they, they don't actually go through and bury that functionality. You can actually go through and... I don't know if this is... Like, I don't actually have any other tabs on my um, phone to actually show you, but at least in the phone, it's very easy to go through and know what tabs are open on your desktop with a couple taps of your finger. And that's okay. What I've noticed is that the syncing is not actually all that good. Sometimes the tabs that you have on your desktop don't show up on your phone for hours afterwards, and by that time, I've found some other way to get the link. Uh, and it's the same going vice versa. Uh, I've also noticed that sometimes it won't refresh. So, uh, at least on the phone, there's no way to like pull like on on your. I think I have an Android phone here, right? And you go to the sync thing, and and it's great. And my tabs that I have open here are open. But if it doesn't sync automatically, you can't just pull down to sync here. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can go into the settings and like hit sync now, but that's an extra step that I don't really want to take. I just want to pull down to refresh. Now, it took ages for Firefox to get that functionality too, but that one little thing really bothers me because, like I said, I do that all the time. So that's another like mark against it. Another thing that I would say bothered me quite a lot is that there's no... real functionality for supporting plugins. Now, it supports all of your Google Chrome part plugins, but you actually have to search for the Google Chrome store in order to do it. I like like a button. I mean, there doesn't seem to be a good way for a, a, you know, to get to your extensions. Like, I mean, you have the extensions manager, which is just the Chrome extensions manager. Oh, you wanna actually, there is a button up here that says Chrome Web Store, so, and I didn't even notice that, so that's kind of one. Like, I visit the Web Store, at least when I'm setting up a browser fairly often, because I have to get the, the, you know, the at least the regular plugins that I actually have to have uh, installed, and I didn't find that button until just now, so I actually had to Google uh, the, the Web Store, which is 
you know, annoying. I mean, it's just a, a little thing. But I mean, these these are all just little things. It's the it's death by a thousand cuts. The other thing I know I I absolutely despise and I changed right away was that their default web browser or default search, excuse me, their default search was Bing, and I can't stand Bing. Uh, I'm tr I'm trying desperately. So right now my my search browser, my search engine is. DuckDuckGo. And I know somebody's in the comments going to say, well, Matt, DuckDuckGo uses Bing. I know. <laughs> and I constantly rail against Bing and DuckDuckGo all the time because it's trash. <laughs> DuckDuckGo is not that good. It's good in theory. I want to support it, so that's why I try to use it. But 90% of the time, I'm always going up here and saying, oh my goodness, I mean, this is going to be a bad example because Google doesn't actually do a good job of searching for the Linux cast. I actually did this time. We're, run, we're ranking up in the search engines. It didn't used to show up like that. Um, but 90% of the time, I have to use the G-Bang in DuckDuckGo in order to actually get the proper search results. And that's because Bing is terrible. I mean, it's not necessarily because DuckDuckGo is terrible, but I'm pretty sure, like I said, DuckDuckGo uses Bing, and it's terrible. It's not good. So I switched away from that automatically. I mean, like I said, it's not something that's hard to change. It's just the idea behind it. Like, I don't know. It's something that, it's just yet another thing that added kind of on top of my experience of it not, you know, not being for me. Uh, from, at least out of the box, I, I've gone through and ma made all these customizations, and I've changed the search engine. I've you know, changed the appearance, and I've tried to work through the syncing issues that I've had. The true thing that was bothering me is the slowness of it, because it is slower than Firefox in certain areas. Now it's also faster than Firefox in some some areas too. Uh, there's no true like. Even Chrome is slower than something, you know, f Firefox in some areas. There's no, like, true winner that's across the board fast. But the things that I use the most, I mean, I, I, I know as a Linux user I shouldn't be a big Google user, but I use Google software all the time. I use Google Docs every day. I use uh, Google Search every day. I use Gmail every day. I mean, it's just, it's something I have to do for work, right? So when I want to use a browser, that browser has to be able to visit those things efficiently, and Vivaldi just doesn't. So I talked about several little things that were just, you know, that bugged me, right? But the two biggest things that bother me about Vivaldi is, one, it's not open source, and two, it's slow. And I might be able to deal with the slowness if it was open source, I might be able to deal with the proprietariness of it if it was fast. So, but the fact that it's both <laughs> means I can't switch to it. So that's a, that's the the problem. So I asked yesterday in the community tab on the channel if anybody else has been using Vivaldi and has been enjoying it. And I think there was like one or two people said, yeah, Vivaldi's not bad. And everybody else is like, well, you know, I use Firefox or I use Cute Browser or something like that. It, and Firefox or... Vivaldi slow, so I was not the only person who has seen Vivaldi be slow. So it's not just me. I, I thought maybe, well, you know, maybe it's just my internet, but that's kind of why I asked that question was because I wanted to make sure that I wasn't the only one who thought that at least in some situations Vivaldi is quite slow. And like I said, that's comparing it to Firefox, which already is not the speediest of browsers. So my quest for a different browser continues now. My next thing that I'm going to be trying is trying to get Cute Browser working with the the new ad blocking that it came out a couple months ago. I have not been successful in that yet, but I haven't really read read into it all that much. I'm hoping I can find like a tutorial or something on how to do it, uh, because I do better with a tutorial than other than trying to just wing it. So that's my next quest. Because if I could get Vival or if I could get Cute Browser to work with ad blocking, that will be my browser. Because when I reviewed Cute Br Browser two or three months ago, my only complaint with it really was that it didn't block ads worth a damn. So, and everybody always says, well, Matt, aren't you a YouTuber trying to make money off of ads? And they're like, yes, but 
ads are terrible. So I mean, ads are uh, atrocious, especially those middle roll ads, which I'll never have on my channel. I'm never, I will never enable them. So if you see them, that's YouTube's fault. I just, I can't, I don't want people to cut my videos like in half to show an advertisement. That's just dumb. And rant. <laughs> so, thank you for watching. You can follow us on Twitter at Linux Cash. You can follow us on Facebook at Linux Cash. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Linux Cash. If you're a level 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, patron, you'll get early access to some of our videos. And actually, I've been fairly uh, consistent in terms of getting early access to my subscribers for all the videos this, this past week. So, um, I don't know that it will always be all videos. At least two or three a week is what I'm kind of aiming for. You'll get early access, sometimes 12 hours, sometimes a full day. This one here will probably be closer to a full day now that I'm thinking about it because I'm recording uh, fairly early. So if you support us on Patreon, you'll get, or, and, and you are a level two through five patron, you'll get early access to some videos. So if that's something you're interested in, patreon.com slash Linuxcast. And with that in mind, I'd like to thank our current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks, everybody, for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.